In a previous video, I showed how to get a sharp image of Jupiter using the NextImage 5 webcam. I briefly gave a few tips on how to use iCap, the software that comes with the webcam, and I showed you how I use Registax. In this video, I want to give you some tips on how to do one of the trickier tasks involved in planetary imaging, and that is pointing the camera at the planet. Because planets appear so small, less than an arc minute, we end up with a small field of view. If you don't see the planet on the computer screen, then you may not have any idea which way to move the telescope to center the image. The tips I suggest in this video apply to cameras other than the next image, but before I get to that part, I want to show you one more setting change to make in iCap. iCap has different codecs to choose from, and the default codec is defective. For you to follow along, bring up the toolbar manager and make sure you have the recording bar selected. Under the View menu, select Toolbars, Toolbar Manager. I have selected Device Bar, Recording Bar, and Exposure Bar. You choose the codec from this drop-down menu in the middle of the Recording Bar. The first item in the list is DV Video Encoder and is selected by default. If you use this default codec, it will convert your 640x480 image into a 720 by 480 image and your planets won't be round. Also note that most of these codecs compress your image, which is great for reducing the file size, but compression can reduce the quality of the final image. Down here near the bottom of the list are four uncompressed options. RGB24 and RGB32 are the ones I recommend. The RGB24 option will give you a file that is 25% smaller than the RGB32 option. I've had success with RGB32, but I'm going to start using the RGB24 for the smaller files. Again, both of these are uncompressed formats. The drop down menu here in the device bar lets you select pixel size. If you don't see any RGB24 options, then go back here to the view menu and select show all video formats. Now you will see a larger list in the drop down menu which now includes RGB 24 options. One thing I found to be very useful is this 9x50 finder scope. I now use this in place of the red dot finder that came with my telescope. I've used the red dot finder and also this green laser finder, but these are both one power. The 9x50 finder gives me nine power and much greater pointing accuracy. Since I've been using it, I've been able to put Saturn on my computer screen the first try, at least in the 5 megapixel mode. Now it is possible that you'll have your telescope pointing directly at Saturn and still not see it on the computer screen if you're not sufficiently in focus. So how do you focus your telescope without first finding Saturn? What I do is take it out in the daytime and point it at some trees off in the distance. I use the same eyepiece I'm going to use to find Saturn in the dark, this cheapy one I have here with crosshairs. I focus the trees with the eyepiece and then swap the eyepiece for the camera. I take note of how much adjustment I have to make to get the trees to be in focus on the computer screen. It might be, say, a half a turn to the left. And then I make that same adjustment in the dark. Now it's recommended that you don't use a diagonal for astrophotography. You want to minimize the amount of glass that you have between the camera and Saturn. Imagine you're driving down the road and you want to take pictures out of the side of your car. You might roll the window down to get the best possible picture. You might be thinking that you can just use the diagonal and the eyepiece to find Saturn and then swap all this out for the camera. If you do that, Realize that you have all this extra distance here with the eyepiece that you don't have with the camera. And that means you're going to need a lot more turns of the focus knob. So at least do the same thing in the daytime tree focusing procedure that you do at night. But I recommend that if you have to use the diagonal to find Saturn, that you go ahead and image with it. And that's because your diagonal is probably not exactly 90 degrees. It might be 89.9 degrees and that tenth of a degree is about the same size as your field of view and can make it so that you won't see Saturn at all. Now of course with the diagonal 
you'll get a mirror image, but that's not really a big deal. You can flip it in software in post-processing. In Registax, there's a flip and rotate button right next to the RGB align and RGB balance buttons. After pointing the telescope as best we can, we try to find Saturn on the computer screen. In your camera control software, turn the gain to maximum. Change your shutter speed to something really slow, like one-fifth of a second. At most, you will be getting five frames per second, no matter what the frames per second setting is. If your camera has more pixels than 640 by 480, then set it to the maximum number of pixels. Also, you want to see the entire image on your computer screen without having to use scroll bars. On iCap, we set the window size to 20% and the pixel size to 2592 by 1944. Saturn should be there. Do you see it? This is what Saturn looks like with the gain set to max and a really long shutter setting when you're not in focus. Watch Saturn appear when I turn the focus knob. Don't worry about perfect focus at this point. We want to center Saturn on the screen by moving the telescope. Here I am moving the telescope to center Saturn in the image. Next, we want to go back to the 640x480 mode. In iCap, you can save yourself a little effort by switching the window size from 20% to 100% before selecting the 640x480 mode. If you do it the other way around, you will then have to drag the corner of the window to eliminate the scroll bars. My ex used to say I had OCD, but I explained I was just using my brain to make life easier. Once you have Saturn centered in the 640x480 screen, you can set the gain and shutter speed to something more reasonable. Finally, you want to spend some time focusing before you begin making your little movie. Using the tips in this video, you may not actually need to get the 9x50 finder scope. I use a star and a bad enough mask to make sure I have perfect focus, so I have to be able to find Saturn without an eyepiece. In the video description, I will put links to where you can get the finder scope and eyepieces with crosshairs.